Well, I can just imagine the conversation 65 million years ago. Oh, geez. Why today? It's been such a good day picking off all these small mammals. And then you have to have this meteorite. Today, we're going to talk about extinction and biodiversity in the Anthropocene. And the fundamental concept is that mass extinctions have occurred multiple times in the Earth's history. Each case of these mass extinctions involves drastic changes in the atmosphere and interactions between life and the physical environment seem to be involved. Part one, let's talk about a history of mass extinctions. Over the last four billion years of history, different factors have contributed to mass extinctions. We note these mass extinctions through a loss of biodiversity. We've had extraordinarily large meteorites or asteroids crash into the planet. We've had snowball earth. We've had periods of volcanism and we've had warm and hypoxic oceans. Hypoxia being low oxygen concentrations. The end of a period in the geological chart is noted as a time of mass extinction. So at each of these periods here, we note that there's been a mass extinction associated with an event inducing that mass extinction. Of the mass extinctions that occurred before the Cambrian period, that is the pre-Cambrian periods, we know that there were three snowball Earth events. One about 2.3 billion years ago, one about 750, and the other about 650 million years ago. Each of those events, we know, was associated with a low CO2 concentration where the carbon dioxide concentration was reduced because of biological activity. Furthermore, we know that in these historical time periods, the sun was not as warm as it is today. It was not as bright. And so as a consequence, when the CO2 got lower, it had much more of an impact on our planet, throwing it into a snowball Earth event. When we begin to look at periods of time over the last 500 million years, we can identify the end of a period, such as the end of the Ordovician, the end of the Devonian, the end of the Triassic, the end of the Cretaceous, by a large change in biodiversity. It turns out that many of these events are associated with volcanism. And the patterns that we see in the ocean are the same as those that we see on land. These periods of volcanism, which are associated with the end of an era, last between about a half a million and two million years. So the question is, what caused that volcanism? What caused the unusual amount of volcanism to occur? A good example of these volcanism periods are the Siberian traps. At a time when there was massive volcanoes in the area of Siberia, covering an area about the size of all of the United States, huge, lasting for hundreds of thousands of years. We call this event at the end of the Permian, the Great Dying. It is the greatest mass extinction that we know in the history of Earth. It lasted about two million years, covered two and a half million kilometers. Uh, hypoxia and volcanic activity raised the temperature of the Earth, average temperature by 11 degrees. And it was associated with significant amounts of hydrogen sulfide released to the atmosphere, both by volcanic activity and by sulfur-reducing bacteria. And along the way, because of the volcanism, the CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere increased by about 2,000 ppm. So we see a big change in the atmosphere associated with this volcanism and extensive uh, biological diversity loss. Here you see a picture of what is thought to be the size of the Siberian traps based on uh, tuff and lava flows. Quite an extensive period of uh, extensive uh, uh, distribution within Siberia. The evidence is beginning to emerge that these major periods of volcanism, that is floor basalt eruptions where we have very long extensive plains of, of uh, basalt associated with volcanism, may have been triggered by asteroid impacts. We can identify over the last 220 million years four major asteroid impacts. Each of those was associated 
with an extinction event, we do know that the last event was associated with an asteroid, and it also resulted in some volcanic eruptions. There were other extinction events that have taken place, and there's growing evidence that we had smaller, less expansive volcanic eruptions, smaller than the Siberian traps, and likely associated with asteroids. So what happens in these big events? So here's a drawing of what we think happened in the Permian at the end when we had this hypoxic environment evolving. So what happened is that we think we had extensive CO2 emissions associated with volcanic activity. That raised the temperature. As a result, from the South Pole to the North Pole and through the tropics, we had dramatic warming of the oceans. That resulted in significant ocean water temperature increases and CO2, uh, um, oxygen loss because warm water can't carry as much, ox as much oxygen. And we had a great amount of sulfur in the area, in the air, lowering the pH. And as a result of that, there was a mass extinction of marine organisms.